two papers. We start with the, the paper analyzing blockwise lattice algorithms using dynamical systems by uh, Guillaume Arne, Xavier Puyol, Damien Stella. The, the speaker is Xavier. Thank you. So I will present the, the paper, Analyzing Blockwise Lattice Algorithms Using Dynamical System. Uh, as you say, it's uh, joint work with uh, Guillaume Moreau and Damien Stelle. So the context. Uh, lattices are mathematical objects that provide uh, art problems that can be used to build various cryptographic primitives such as uh, encryption, hash functions, and so on. And the best known attacks against lattice-based crypto system rely on what is called uh, lattice, uh, blockwise lattice reduction algorithms. That's why we want uh, here to study this algorithm to assess the security of lattice-based crypto systems. The most widely used uh, reduction algorithm among the lattice reduction algorithms is called BKZ, and that's the one uh, we will study in this talk. It's the widely used because in practice it's the most efficient, and despite the fact that it's not well understood in theory, that is, no reasonable time bound is known on the running time of BKZ. Our contribution is to give a first worst case analysis of the BKZ algorithm. And to do that, we use a new technique. We introduce a model of the algorithm, which in, its, in itself can be interesting to understand other things on this algorithm and other lattice reduction algorithms. So the talk is in two parts. Uh, I will first give a few reminders on lattice, lattice reduction, and give the, result, the main result. And then I will explain the main ideas behind the result and uh, the model that we used to obtain it. A lattice uh, is a grid of points. It's, it's a set of all lin integer linear combination of a fixed number of in linearly independent vector of n linearly independent vectors. So here we have uh, two vectors that generate the lattice represented by uh, the black dots. The two vectors are called a basis of the lattice. And as long as the dimension, the number of vectors is at least two, all lattices have infinitely many bases. The problem of lattice reduction consists in finding, finding a, a basis of the lattice made of rather short and rather orthogonal vectors. For instance, a uh, more reduced basis of this lattice would be this basis. So when the dimension is two, it's easy. When the dimension, it's when the dimension grows that it becomes harder. Um, so finding reduced lattices is hard when the dimension grows. Now, all bases of the same lattice have the same determinant. It's an invariant of, the, of a lattice. And the ratio between the determinant, the, no, between the first vector of a basis and the determinant gives a measure of how well a lati uh, basis is reduced. So this ratio will be called the Hermit factor. Uh, the, and to make things simple, our goal is to find bases of lattices with small Hermit factors. It is known that the Hermit factor can always be made as small as the square root of a sequence that grows linearly in n, the, the lattice dimension. A more precise way to measure the the lattice reduction consists in considering the Gram-Schmidt uh, orthogonalization of the bases. 
I will keep this the same notation during the whole talk. Xi is equal to the log of the norm of the ith uh, gram schmidt vector of a basis. And considering the shape of the Xi uh, shows how well the lattice is reduced. There are various uh, notions of lattice reduction. The strongest reduction is called HKZ reduction. When a, when a basis is HKZ reduced, its Hermit factor is optimal, its square root of gamma n, and the shape of the X size is very flat, which means this is a strong reduction. On the other hand, it takes exponential time to compute a HKZ reduced basis, so it's impractical. On the opposite, the LLL reduction is a weak reduction. It achieves only an exponential MA factor. There is a big gap between the X size, but it can be computed in polynomial time. What we are studying is a compromise between the two. So it's BKZ, and it's not an algorithm. In fact, it's a hierarchy of algorithms that takes a parameter beta, and when beta is equal to 2, BKZ is equivalent to LLL. When beta, beta is equal to n, it's equivalent to HKZ. Between the two, BKZ achieves an exponential Hermit factor, but the constant of the exponent can be made as small as we want by increasing the parameter beta. BKZ makes use of HKZ in small dimension. In dimension if we apply BKZ on a n-dimensional lattice with a parameter beta, it will make use of HKZ in dimension beta. So it takes at least time, exp uh, time exponential in beta. To have something continuous between BKZ and LLL, we would like to have here something polynomial in N. But as I said, we don't know the, uh, we have no bound on the complexity of BKZ. So we don't know if this question mark can be replaced by poly of n. So a brief history on uh, non result on BKZ and other uh, algorithm of the same family. The definition was given in uh, 1987 and the algorithm a few years later. And uh, an experiment, experimental result, in particular by Gamma and Nguyen, shows that it's very unlikely, in fact, that BKZ is polynomial in n. That is, this question, it's unlikely that this question mark can be poly of n. On the other hand, there are other blockwise algorithms, still between HKZ and LLL, that do have a complexity polynomial in n. However, in practice, BKZ is the most efficient algorithm and achieves the best uh, compromise. That's why it's really worth uh, trying to optimize the complexity of BKZ even if we know other algorithms. So what does the BKZ algorithm do? BKZ is just a, a loop, and it, at each step of the loop, we do a small part of the reduction. During this small part of the, of the reduction, the strong HKZ reduction algorithm is applied at, at most n times in small dim dimension, in dimension beta. So this is the main step of the algorithm. One step of BKZ takes time polynomial in N. The problem is how many times is the, the small reduction step applied? In the standard version of BKZ, it's applied until nothing occurs, that is, uh, until the HKZ, all HKZ reduction do nothing inside the loop but it doesn't work. So what can we do? Here is a curve that shows the evolution of the quality of the basis during the, uh, the execution of BKZ. So it's the time and it's the quality. Uh, it's, uh, when the Hermit factor decreases, the quality uh, improves. So during the first tours, during the 100 first tours, the quality improves quickly. But after that, 
there are many 1,000 loops in this dimension, and between loops 200 and the end, nearly nothing occurs. That's the basis of our result, which is we have not, we didn't prove that BKZ ends in polynomial time, in time polynomial in N, but we have proved uh, something which is nearly as good, which is uh, we can just stop BKZ after a polynomial number of iterations, a polynomial in N, so N power three times something which is nearly negligible, and after this polynomial time, the quality of the BKZ output is nearly as good as what we can prove for the standard version of BKZ for which we have no time bound. In red, it's the bound for the standard version of BKZ, and we have just uh, some epsilon and some, uh, a small constant. That's the only difference. So that's the main idea, just sub BKZ earlier. I will now explain the model that we use to prove this result. For most lattice algorithms, the analysis rely on a potential function, that is, a, numeric, a numerical function of the input that decreases during, uh, decrease during the execution of the algorithm, and it cannot go uh, uh, below a, cer a certain value, so the algorithm must stop. With BKZ, it doesn't work. Or we didn't manage to get it to work, so we used a different technique. Instead of having just one number, we have a full vector. This is the vector of uh, the xi's, that is the norms of the Gram-Schmidt vectors. And we are first analyzing a model in which we made only one assumption, which is HKZ reduction always follow a fixed pattern which correspond to a sort of worst case uh, HKZ reduced basis. And this implies that knowing only the XIs, not the complete basis, but only the XIs, we have all the information to simulate the algorithm. I will show how the model works on this animation. Um, so this is a base, small basis of dimension nine that is uh, we very weakly reduced at the beginning, and I will apply the model of BKZ. It consists in doing HKZ reduction at each position uh, in small dimension. Say the parameter is four, so we'll, we'll do HKZ in dimension four. I start in position one, and it flattens the first block of XIs. Same thing in position two, and so on, until the end, so that, that is, this is one loop of BKZ, and then it starts again. And the main hypothesis, in the main assumption of the model is that the shape of the HKZ block at each step is exactly the same. Once I have said that, it's now a linear algebra problem. Because the first step consists in taking the mean of the first four vectors, which is a matrix multiplication, and then adding a fixed shape, which means we add a constant vector. Same thing in position two, same thing until the end. So a full loop of BKZ, just a combination of matrix multiplication and vector addition, and can be itself expressed as a multiplication by one matrix A, the expression of uh, which can be computed, and a constant vector gamma. Once this is, uh, so now this is uh, a linear algebra problem, the analysis of which is uh, merely technical. It's in two steps. Study the fixed point uh, of the system, and the, it, it can be shown that this system as a fixed point which is nearly a line, and the slope of the fixed point is directly related to the Hermit factor. So it corresponds to the Hermit factor uh, that is given in the theorem. And the second step of the, uh, the study of the model is proving that the model has uh, eigenvalues smaller than one to prove that it converges in polynomial time. 
So it's not as simple, but uh, it's nearly as if, uh, well, up to small details, the, small, the largest eigenvalue is one minus something, one over polynomial of n, and this is enough to prove that the dynamical systems converge to the fixed point in polynomial time. This leads to the claim complexity bound. This was the analysis of the model. So, uh, but our result is a result on, not on the, on the model, but on the real algorithm. So this, cannot, this, this analysis cannot be transposed directly uh, to the real algorithm. We have to do a bit of uh, uh, some transformation and some averaging. But in the end, uh, a rigorous adaptation of what has been done on the model, which, which was a, a sort of worst case analysis, can be transposed to the real algorithm and it's enough to obtain the result uh, on the quality of BKZ output. So, in conclusion, uh, we have the first uh, analysis of BKZ. We don't prove that it ends in polynomial time, but the idea is just stop it earlier and it works. The output, of, the output is as a good quality. And for that, we used a new method which rely on, on, a, on a model which, can, which we hope uh, can be used to uh, prove other things on blockwise algorithms. So uh, we hope that it will lead to better strategies uh, to reduce lattices and to improve blockwise lattice algorithms. Uh, an open, another open problem is that, in practice, this is a worst case algorithm, and the real BKZ algorithms behave uh, better than the, uh, what is proved in the worst case. So there is still a gap we, we would like to explain, and we expect uh, we could improve the model to make it more predictive. Thank you. We have time for a short question. No, this is a worst case analysis for uh, we, are, we, have, we don't know anything for the standard BKZ. We know things only for the BKZ uh, interrupted. So we have a worst case analysis of that, but we can prove that it's as good as the original. If it's as good as the worst case estimate, but we know that BKZ in practice defines... Yes. So there is a small gap, and that's what I was saying here. We would like to improve the model to uh, fill this gap. But yes, there is a small uh, gap. Okay, thanks, the author again.